Let's have a look at equivalent fractions. Here, I've taken the whole and divided it into three pieces, and I'm considering two of them. So I've got two thirds. But I could just as well cut this up a little bit more finely. This isn't going to change the number I've got. I've still got the same amount of red, and I'm still in exactly the same position on the number line. But this time, I can view it as one, two, three, four, five, six pieces, of which I've got four. So I can view it as four sixths. But it's exactly the same number. So two thirds and four sixths are equivalent fractions. They're equal to each other in value. How do I get from two thirds to four sixths? Well, I doubled the number of pieces I'd cut the thing up into. So as long as I do the same to the numerator and the denominator, I will get an equivalent fraction. I could also have started with four sixths and worked my way back to two thirds, which is by dividing top and bottom of the fraction by two. So if I want to find a fraction equivalent to 10 over 12, I can decide to multiply numerator and denominator by 3. As long as I do both by the same amount, I'll get an equivalent fraction. So 30 over 36 is, equal, is equivalent to 10 over 12. I could also have chosen to divide top and bottom by the same thing. So in this case, let's do it by 2, and I'd get 5 over 6. So these are all equivalent to each other. You'll often be asked to write your fractions in simplest terms. And what this means is you must keep on dividing top and bottom of the fraction by the same thing until there's nothing except one that can divide into both of them. So if you start with 40 over 60, quickly and easily I can see 10 can go into top and bottom. So I'll get 4 over 6. But this isn't simplest terms yet because 4 and 6 can both be divided by 2. So I'll do that. And then I get 2 over 3, and the only thing that can go into 2 and as well as into 3 is 1. So I stop here, and 2 thirds is 40 over 60 in simplest terms.